So the uh, one you've chosen, your region is bounded by x and square root of x, which means it looks like this. And here's the point one one. Okay. Now the integral over this thing. Do you go clockwise or counterclockwise? Does it say? It says counterclockwise. Okay, so that's in the positive direction, right? So we would integrate over this boundary, okay? Um, and instead of parameterizing, I'm just going to write it out, okay? Because it's actually just saying do it by doing an area integral, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we could parameterize it, let t go from 0 to 1 and x equals t, y equals t, that gives you this, right? And then for t equals 1 to 0, let x equal t, y equals square root of t, right? And then translate everything, which would be a little messy, but not bad. Do it in five minutes if you keep your wits about it. Okay, so anyhow, you're integrating what now? It's cosine x sine y? It is sine x cosine dx. Sine x cosine what? dx. Cosine? Suppose from like cosine y dx. Cosine y. Cosine y dx. Yes. I just wanted to know what the cosine was. I knew yes. it was a dx, okay? Uh, uh, plus xy plus cosine x, sine y, dy. Okay, good. Okay? Now that's your p dx. Here's your q dy. That's going to equal the integral over the region, which is easy to do. You just let x go from 0 to 1, y from x to square root of x, right? Or you can let y go from 0 to 1, x goes from y squared to x, okay? y squared to y. Um, okay, anyhow, there's your integral. Okay, now it's going to be qx minus py. Very easy. Okay, qx is cosine x, cosine y. plus uh, minus, that's qx, I did px. The py is going to be plus sine x sine y, right? Would it be sine x, y? Wait. I'm doing px. I'm doing py, sorry. If that's p, then the only thing you got a derivative of is the cosine, which is negative of the sine, but then it's negative py, right? So it's just bookkeeping of writing it down and being more careful than I am. And then the x derivative of q is just y minus sine x, sine y. And we'll integrate with respect to y, x, so the integral over the region goes from x equals 0 to 1 and from y equals x to square root of x, right? Now this is a fairly contrived example because what happens? Wouldn't it go from square root of x to x? No, because if you start here, no. you hit the x before the square root of x, because yeah. between 0 and 1, the square root is greater than the value, right? If you take a square of something less than 1, it gets smaller. So you need to understand that numerically as well as geometrically, okay? Well, what happens in this interval? 
what happens to your integrand? Grand, can you simplify it? Really simplifies, doesn't it? So it's the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from x to square root of x, of y dy dx. Now what your text is trying to get used to is it's powerful and easy to make this conversion, and this is much easier than what you'd have to do to do the line integral. Uh, okay? First place, your line integral would have two paths. You'd have to have do two line integrals, right? Okay? And then, um, you'd end up with sines and or cosines of square root of t if you used the x equals t parameterization, okay? Which would be painful. Okay? So what you would end up with if you tried to do the path integral over the curve would be difficult or impossible because, you know, how do you integrate sine of square root of x? But this is really easy. Okay? Make sense? You could use the half angle identity. Wait, no. You could, because they have different arguments. Half angle identity on the square root? Well, I was thinking you could combine the sine, sine and cosine. cosine but, but you'd still end up with a square root in there. So I'd, I'd have to write it out to make sure it works as badly as I think it might, because things sometimes resolve in a way you can't predict. Okay? But that's pretty much where we are.